The Battle of France is the official title for the battle that ensued between Germany and the Allied forces when Hitler invaded France during the Second World War. The battle is remembered today as one of the most important battles of World War II and one of its early defining moments. While France appeared impenetrable with her massive Maginot Line, not even that was enough to stop Hitler and the German forces. But how exactly was Germany able to orchestrate the successful invasion of France? Well, in today's video on Warzone, we've detailed just how Hitler and his generals masterminded this historic invasion of France, crushing the mighty Maginot Line in the process. Make sure to give this video a like, hit the subscribe button and smash that notification bell to receive updates of when we post more intriguing war videos like this one. Do leave us a comment as well as we'd love to read your opinion on this historic event. In 1940, Germany orchestrated a massive invasion of regions across the northwestern part of Europe in what remains an historic event till date, and also saw German forces capture France and three other countries of Luxembourg, the Netherlands and Belgium. That massive invasion became known as the Battle of France. This period was essentially marked by a dark time in the history of France and the rest of Europe. France and Britain entered the Second World War shortly after Germany invaded Poland in 1935. Both countries knew and expected that Germany would advance westwards after invading Poland. To counter the Germans, the British Expeditionary Forces sent troops to its allies in France and Belgium. In September 1939, the French decided to advance into the Saar region of Western Germany, but there was no fighting. This period of anticipation was known as the Phony War. It was not until 1940 before the real fighting began, but it was not in France nor Belgium as the Allied forces had predicted. Germany decided to invade the countries of Denmark and Norway instead on the 9th of April 1940. These invasions were orchestrated by Hitler to grant Germany secure access to its iron ore supplies from Sweden, which were shipped out of Norwegian ports. The broader aim was to prevent the Royal Navy from controlling the North Atlantic, thereby blockading German shipments in these ports. Not long had the attack on Denmark begun, that the country soon surrendered to the superior military power of the German troops. British and French troops who fought in Norway arrived too late and only a day after the country had fallen to complete German control. However, in the western parts of faraway Norway called Narvik, the Royal Navy was able to deliver heavy damage to the German Navy. This made the German Navy unable to maintain control of the North Sea and the English Channel in the long term. Initially, when Hitler invaded Poland, he had hoped that Britain and France would not enter the war, but he already developed a backup strategy for the eventuality that both countries did. Hitler's plans included a rapid German attack on the Netherlands, Belgium and Luxembourg to prevent the Allied forces from having a clear route into Germany. The attacks were also to reach as far as the Atlantic coast. This would provide Hitler with both air and sea bases needed to conduct military operations against Britain. The German battle plan consisted of two main military operations, which were Fall Guy, meaning Case Yellow, and Fall Rot, meaning Case Red. And surprisingly to German commanders, the plan went according to plan. Case Yellow's goal was to drive the main Allied forces into northern France and Belgium and then surround them in a huge pincer maneuver. This attack was a diversion and the German forces wanted to draw the main and best allied forces north to meet it. The southern arm of the pincer swept through Luxembourg and into Belgium. The German forces advanced and fought their way across the Meuse River and on the 13th of May 1940, the attack plunged through French defenses and extended across northern France, causing devastating damage to the allied forces. The German forces then proceeded to the English Channel near Abbeville, at the mouth of the River Somme, just a week later, with no strategic Allied reserve or counterattack by the Allied forces to stop them. The German pincer formation was able to trap Dutch, French, Belgian and British forces between its army groups and proceeded to squeeze them into a pocket in northern France and Belgium against the coast. The Allied forces had no choice but to escape by sea through the ports of Boulogne, Calais, Dunkirk and Ostend. Although an Allied counterattack was briefly successful at Arras, it eventually failed due to the reduced number of forces behind it and the inability to react and reorganize against a much more agile and responsive German force. All French and Belgian ports north of the River Sonne, apart from Dunkirk, had already been captured by the Germans and Case Yellow had succeeded in its objectives. 
The Germans then went ahead to the next phase and initiated Case Red. The plan was to strike south into the capital of France and capture Paris. German troops attacked on the 5th of June across the Somme and Erna rivers, heading into the north, central and most central parts of France. At the same time, a separate German force attacked the Maginot Line, which was France's powerful fortification on its eastern border to deter invaders. Germany's spontaneous attacks on the Maginot Line helped prevent the reinforcement of French troops in the capital city, when German troops launched simultaneous attacks on Paris as well. It was a well-executed blitzkrieg attack that completely weakened the French troops and prevented them from reorganizing in counter-attacks. German troops were able to surround and inflict great damage to the French troops in the capital. The German troops also had superior communication systems, which proved to be of great advantage. These communication systems allowed German troops to move and react faster than the Allies. The Maginot Line fell one by one as severe attacks across the Somme and Aisne eventually broke through. Paris would subsequently fall to German troops on the 14th of June 1940. By the 22nd of June, the French signed an armistice surrendering territory to the Germans and France had fallen. The German attacks and advancement left many Allied soldiers vulnerable to the danger of being captured. Although there were amphibious evacuations of over 192,000 troops consisting of British, Canadian, French, Polish, Czech soldiers who were rescued and taken to safety by the Royal Navy from ports in Brittany and western parts of France. It is reported that between 3,000 and 6,000 people are thought to have died at sea and aboard ships sunk by German aircraft. Also, over 10,000 men were left behind, whom eventually became prisoners of war against the Germans. The terms of the armistice allowed the southern half of France and the Atlantic seaboard to remain under French civil administration. France was also allowed to retain its colonies in North Africa and elsewhere, but in every other regard, the country became a puppet state of Germany. The new French government was based in the city of Vichy in the central part of France. France remained under German rule until 1944, when the Allied forces liberated it from Germany in the Battle of Normandy in June 1944.